Okay, the next thing we're going to be doing is pinch pots, two identical um, mug pinch pots. For a pinch pot, it's pretty simple. Uh, you're going to, I showed you a little bit yesterday, but you're going to take a ball of clay that's roughly this, the size of a baseball, I would say. Yeah. Um, the height that you want it, you should get the ball roughly that height already. So maybe it won't be a perfect sphere if you want it a little bit taller. It might be more like an egg shape if you wanted it around that tall. Because when you start doing the pinching in the pot, it's not going to grow in height really, it's going to just grow in width. Does that make sense? So get it roughly around there. Then you're going to be putting a, a hole in the middle with your thumb or your finger or whatever. Hopefully the more in the middle the better. Okay. So you have the hole in the middle. Then you're going to begin there and the, the reason we call it a pinch pot is we're just simply pinching to create voluminous space inside of uh, this piece of clay. Keep working it and working it. Go slow. Develop it all together. Don't take one area and develop it. Develop it all together, like all the sides and the bottom. Develop it all at the same time. Don't get one side or one area that's really nice and refined and leave the others not refined. Develop it as a whole. At some point, you're going to want to take your pinch pot and you're going to want to um, just kind of hit it on the ground just to make kind of like a flat surface for the bottom. You're going to be refining this, but just at the beginning, you just want to get kind of a rough, flat shape so you have it. You will be refining it more and more. Once you start doing this, I suggest using something like this, this ribbed serrated tool, when you want to start working on the surface. One thing I want to show you is I did a pinch pot earlier and half of it I did nice refined surface and the other half is sometimes what I see which is a less refined surface if that makes sense. And this side I just spent a lot more time when I talk about intentional lines it's like nice curved, clear, crisp, intentional lines Whereas this is a little bit just more, I don't know, rough and not, not refined, I guess. So the, re the way that you can do that is, like I said, this tool works really well. Now, I'm not going to sit and develop the volume of this because I don't want to sit and have you guys watching forever you know, while I sit and do each thing. But let's just say that I work this and the, um, the sides are all the same thickness. They're about, you know a quarter of an inch or less, an eighth of an inch. And there's really nice volume. And let's say that I may, I flatten the bottom and it's starting to look like a, a pot. This is a good way to get all of these like bumpy things. Just start like, it's like you're raking sand. If you had like lumps in the sand and you took a rake over it and you just kind of smoothed it out, that's kind of like what's going on here. You can just take your time. And you just kind of, and then what I do is I take the smooth side that's the other end, and then just kind of go in. And it just takes that kind of, those kind of lumps out of it. Okay? And I'm just working it. I'm looking at the bottom. Now, the bottom you can see here, it's just kind of a flat, unrefined bottom over here. This bottom is nice and flat, and I carved in a little foot at the bottom. You see that? Um, so I'm looking for that type of refinement of when, uh, whenever possible. So the lip, same thing. I'm just going to take this, start working the lip. This is the way that you can like slowly refine these. At some point, you're going to want to stop. You're going to look at it. You're going to say, is it kind of leaning to one side? Is the lip up and down? You mean you want to develop it all slowly. And if like one side's up, you can just kind of like take it down a little bit, pinch it out. If it's considerably lower or higher over here, you can kind of take it down, pinch it out. But you want to get all of the, the large kind of 
shaping done, like I said, all at the same time and not um, develop one area faster than the other. For the inside of the mug, again, it wants to be nice and smooth and refined. If this is a mug, you're gonna want it smooth so that when you clean the inside of it, there's not ridges and marks and bumps and stuff that'll be hard to clean. This will make it nice and easy to clean. So for this project, what I'm looking for uh, is a few things. One, good refinement. Good symmetric, you know, it's symmetrical. You, this does not have a handle on it, but you will be putting on a handle later, which I'll show you how to do. So you can imagine this will have a mug handle. Yours will need a handle. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, any questions on this? Remember you're doing, it'll be two mugs. I'm looking for them to be identical as possible, obviously. There'll be a set. Uh, in the guidelines I put out there, I think I said I want you to have a balance of both very smooth, refined surface and also texture. So find a way uh, or one of those texture things that we have or your own type of texture to put it. Not the whole thing textured, but kind of a balance between the texture and the smooth and they'll kind of play off of each other. Two mugs, they look similar. Refinement with a handle as close as possible. Uh, to, uh, that they look as close as possible to each other when done. That's the whole assignment. I think that'll take us to the end of the semester. Is there any questions about this next assignment? I'm going to say it one more time because somebody's going to hand it and say, and not put a handle on it because they said your demo doesn't have a handle. This is more to show the, ref the two sides of a refinement versus non-refined, and this does not have a handle, but yours will. And a foot. Last point, mugs are about feeling nice and voluminous. The more delicate and kind of voluminous you can make them feel, they're more, just as much about the space with inside, inside the mug as it is about the, the walls of the mug. So try to make it have some volume in it and it'll feel light and airy and it'll hold some liquid. Good? Thank you.